Hello, Zero K fans. This is welcome to Nano is at dawn. This is Shadow Fury three three, your host. I said that wrong. Damn it. <sighs> Whatever. Just watch the game. It's Kane and Hokomoko, and it's gonna be between the two of them. And yeah, Hokomoko is the Clan Wars organizer. Kane is another prominent commentator. I'm sorry, I was muted last time, and on YouTube you won't hear what I said before, but I just seem to be messing up my ability to enunciate today. I'm not sure why. Anyway, Hokomoko going for light vehicles, Kane for hovercraft, Kane going for a very quick dagger. Dagger scouting runs, not really any major attack. Hokomoko looks like they want to do something pretty powerful, and it's going to get spotted out. Kane getting kind of lucky, seeing that there are four Scorchers coming along to their side of the map. That is, I mean, Hokomoko isn't even expanding it. That was, that was a rush like no other. Four Scorcher rush, probably going to try to kill the commander early on, because, well, four Scorchers kills a commander pretty reliably. Kane getting some preparations up. One Lotus has four daggers at home. Had the one for scouting, but that's that's fine. The 34 medal is definitely worth it. I should say the 34 medal donation is definitely worth it. And in comes Hokomoko Slashers. I mean, Scorchers, not Slashers. Although they might build Slashers later on, I'm not sure. Against Hovercraft? Hmm. Well, you're going to have to deal with Scalpels, because you always have to deal with Scalpels. Not right now, mind you. Kane not building scalpels, but generally, Kane will build scalpels. And then won't stop building scalpels because he's playing hovercraft. They're playing hovercraft. So that is going to be answered probably with Ravagers just for the health. That That's a typical thing. No, just set up Ravagers for health because Ravagers have a lot of health, so they just tank everything. And... Well, Hokomoko never really managed to get off. I mean, here's the thing. Hokomoko kind of lost their opportunity, though Kane is being restricted from expanding. They're not moving out. They aren't building any quills. Actually, that's a little surprising. They aren't building any quills. They're probably also taking advantage of the fact that Hokomoko wasn't expanding quickly either. Because at this point, they are not that far behind. Despite being idle in their base for a while, just in case the Scorchers came in. Yeah, they're fine. Like, economically speaking, they're... Basically, once they capture these metal extractors, they're going to be fine. Although they could probably... Oh, there's the quill. There we go. They have what they need. Wonderful. Then this may should block off the Scorchers. So at this point, the early Scorcher rush has been completely ineffective. And then we eventually will see... I mean, once we start seeing scalpels, those Scorchers are going to be screwed. Any levelers will be screwed. Like I said, Ravagers are kind of, I think, the go-to. I suppose you get a Ravager-covered Wolverine. That... That would probably that would be what I would do. Mix Ravagers and Wolverines. So the Ravagers tank the shots, and the Wolverines just wipe them out from afar. Because if you don't know what to do and you're playing light vehicles, Wolverines—that's often a good idea. Not not always, but it does tend to work out a lot. Wolverines are really strong. So if you're not sure what to do, build Wolverines and just have something to block them off from the front. Now Kane responding in kind. They won't be able to kill Hulkamoko's commander, but he will be able to put a little bit of pressure. And wisely avoiding the commander, instead going around the back, will be losing a couple daggers. Oh, just losing the one. Still not great, but they... Ah, uh, no, that... Well, it's information. Why? Good thing they're getting away, though, because they pretty much have to, and unfortunately going to lose these to the Scorchers. But hey, they got information. At this point, Kane basically knows exactly what's up when it comes to economy. They know that Hokomoko is definitely concentrating on getting more light vehicles with a caretaker. Like they're not doing any crazy factory switches early on, like early gunship switch or early air switch. It's worth checking for that. It's probably not going to happen, you know, 95% of the games, but you might be in that 5%. Maybe in that tiny window of games where something odd happens. So, we're going to be having... Well, just more slash... Oh, there we go! There's the scalpels! Ha! And 15 of them! Scalpels for the rest of the game! Okamoko, however, already getting the Ravagers. I'm not sure if they're prepping for Scalpels, just had, it was that a hard read, or if they were actually thinking, well, it's five minutes into the game, I'd better get Ravagers. Actually kind of surprised. Seriously, I think this is actually a hard read. I think they're doing that because they expect Scalpels. Oh, no, I don't think that hard of a read. There are there are less hard reads. I oh, said there are harder reads. There are much harder reads. Building a Ravager in the light vehicle hovercraft matchup is actually fairly typical. Like I said, it's the counter, or one of the counterparts, to Scalpel. And you know they're going to go Scalpel. Like, I was calling Scalpel right at the start of the game because it's hovercraft. They're going to go for Scalpel. If it's a hovercraft mirror, okay, they might have some variation, but 
No, hovercraft light vehicle. It's gonna be scalpel. At least for a good long while. And now, the resolution of the slasher push. Unsurprisingly, it fails because Kane had been well, very well prepared for that. Unfortunately, accessing a little bit. Being that the building primarily scalpels, I'm not sure if they can go for a proxy factory or something. I wouldn't be surprised if they did, actually, because the commander's over here, and they have no other workers other than that one quill up here. I think they have... Yeah, that's it. They have one quill and one commander. Okamoko, on the other hand, is a bit more focused on production, having three masons, all of which are... Yeah, all of which are active, moving around the map. And Hokomoko's commander out setting up that front line. So Kane, unfortunately, in a rather risky position. They are ahead economically, but that production might actually start to bite them. But they do have scalpels. And I'm not kidding when I say scalpels are strong. I'm not being sarcastic. I mean that. They are they are a terrifying unit to try to deal with. And there we go. Kane realizing what's up. Setting up that quill. Well, I probably need a couple, though. Unless they use that quill to build a caretaker. I could see them doing that. But at this point, Kane is basically just trying to keep up economically. Folks in the sidelines, not really adjust... Eh, okay, contest the front line a little bit, but not too much. I try not to provoke Okamoko to attack the front line too much. Because at this point, this is where they want... Them, like, they really do want them to attack here. Kane wants Okamoko to attack over here, because that's where their mace is. I mean, their commander is here as well, and it's kind of bait. But the mace can just kill off all these Scorchers pretty easily. Especially as it should be healed up by the time they come in. Unfortunately, now would be a good time. If if Hokumoko attacks right now, that'll be a really excellent time to attack. Kane being forced back, and this is where the Ravagers will show that they're actually a pretty good choice here. I think these deal 600 damage. Yeah, 622 damage a shot. So it takes three shots to kill the Ravager. And that's what I mean. They tank well. But yeah, this is the timing I was talking about. If... If Hokumoko come in, did Hokumoko have radar? No, Hokumoko does not have radar over here, so they actually have no idea. I was about to say, if they knew, what they could have done is... Oh, that ah, that mace. No! That mace got too close. That is not what it wanted to do. Kane's commander is probably not going to tie two to the fight. It, it's taking the high ground. It should be fine. But that's really risky. That, unfortunately, lost that mace. That's the thing about maces. They aren't... That's kind of why scalpels are so popular. Scalpels don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Don't have to worry about the heat beam. Now the question is, what are the Dominatrix going to go after? There's no real heavy units up here except for the Commander, which I suppose it might go after. I'm fairly certain you can actually Dominatrix a Commander. I've never seen it happen. I'm just fairly certain you can. I think I've seen someone try. Anyway, Hokomoko is... Well, I think they have the advantage. I mean, they have, they have a slightly strong economy. They have a really good position right now. Kane, however, can come in here, and they actually are going to, especially they can come in here. This is a bit of a weaker position, and the Stinger will not hit them, so they should be fine. The only problem here is the Ravagers, which are going to be a bit of a problem. There's not much here to defend. The two Halberds simply are not powerful enough. More Halberds, it would be okay, but this would be time for more Scalpels, I think. Actually, no, I don't know. Against Ravagers? Like, Ravagers are pretty powerful against this. Daggers would probably work okay if you had a few dozen of them, like, in terms of equal cost, because that's a thousand metal. Although a thousand metal worth of daggers is just ten daggers. I think that would one-shot each of them. I think? I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. Let's check the numbers. I know it's a bit more than that. 110 damage a shot. So, no, they need, you need 18 to one-shot Ravagers. And for the 1,000 metal, that's about 12. Not 18. So, for cost, it's not particularly good. Because daggers rely so heavily on that alpha damage, it's pretty much how you have to look at them. Like, are they going to deal enough damage to kill in one shot? I'm a bit surprised that Kokomoko is not using the Wolverines, though. Like I said, Ravagers to tank with Wolverines in the back to actually deal the damage. Oh, as, as, as I say that. Here's me not paying attention. Yeah, it's actually in the build queue. So yeah, the Wolverines are up, so that is going to be powerful. It's going to be very helpful, and Kane still a bit behind. The Dominatrix taking that halberd, that's actually a fairly fairly weak pull. That was good for Kane. Only losing that one halberd, that means they can get rid of the Dominatrix for a relatively low cost. The Reclaim's in their territory, they can deal with that. 
Well, Hokomoko tearing apart the bottom. They're going to be going from here. Probably. Oh, it's going to go to the middle of the map. Okay. I suppose I was going to think they'd go to here because there isn't much in the way of defenses, but I don't think there's any way Hokomoko would know that. They haven't really scattered out that much since they started the game, so I wouldn't really know whether or not that's been set up. And down... Well, these Raptors actually will have a decently easy time dealing with this. They'll probably will lose three or four, but... Nope, they're going to retreat. Never mind. They're not... They had to commit. If they, if they committed, they probably would have been fine. They did not commit. Therefore, a bunch of them were lost for not quite free. The mace is down. Okay. Not quite free, but yes, they are definitely taking too much damage. And Hokomoko able... Sorry, Hokomoko losing the north side. So Kane... Kane being quite tenacious here. They really are behind when it comes to unit counts. Like, in terms of cost, like 2300 metal for their frontline forces compared to 3300 metal. I know, normally I would have that metal thing here. I hope that panel gets added soon, but at the same time, it does mean that we don't have to worry about the commander, because the commander's not really in position right now. Where is that commander, anyway? Ah, oh, it's over here. Yeah, the commander's not in position, and that always gets counted into the numbers. Which, I honestly think should probably not be counted into the offensive numbers. It should be its own number, and then the number of non-commander military units should... And the metal cost of that, I should say. The total metal cost of the non-commander military units, as well as, I suppose, account should be over elsewhere. Should be a different number. So I don't have to try to subtract it out. And it becomes a bit clearer when we're dealing with... What the heck? There we go. Becomes a bit clearer when we're dealing with stuff like, well, a commander. A commander death, for example, a comp snipes early on. What difference that actually makes in terms of military value. Especially when we were dealing... If we're dealing with something that's not a frontline commander. But Hokomoko going for the kill of the gunship plant should be finished, but it's not going to finish anything. Even when Rapier would help a bit, but not enough. The main base is probably screwed. There's an outside chance that there will be enough. Like, Kane might be able to get a Pyrrhic victory here. Maybe, but the gunship plant's not up. So all that... That's 599 metal right there that basically went to waste. That could have been two more scalpels. Actually, three more scalpels. That could have been three more scalpels. And now it's nothing. But Kane not letting that fly. Going for that counter assault, and that's the best they can do at this point. Actually, it's probably gonna. I think they're gonna base trade. Actually, no, they're gonna base trade. It was in one of the comments before the game started, but. It's interesting to know, see how that came up. Like, Kane going for the counterattack. Mostly because Kane was focused so heavily on the northwest side of the map. They have no real way to avoid dealing with. Like, basically, because Kane was focused on the northwest side of the map primarily, they lost their base while annoying because they lost factories is manageable. Well, Hokomoko, on the other hand, I'm not sure if it's as manageable. They didn't have... and their commander's out of their base, but they were expanding more radially rather than a linearly set up. So Kane's already gotten that rebuild going. Well, Hokomoko, on the other hand, they haven't got anything set up yet, but they do have a lot of build power available. Not a lot of metal, though. Finally, Kane gets the economic advantage. I'm sure Kane appreciates... oh, Kane doesn't actually know that, but if they did, they would appreciate the fact that they now have the economic advantage. Nothing to spend it on, though. But then, neither does Hokomoko. Neither player really has anything to spend anything on Hokomoko, going for their absolute favorite factory of all factories, the Amphibious Operations Plant. And that should be done around the same time. Oh, actually, oh, a little bit faster. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised Kane did not build a Caretaker first. That cuts down... Ah, oh, Kane's out. Never mind. I was about to say, if you build a Caretaker before you build a factory, that cuts down about 5 seconds from the build time, because Caretakers take... Because Caretakers cost 250 metal... They take 25 seconds, and then they add another 20 metal to the production. So they add another 10 build power overall. Which means that the factory gets produced in 30 seconds rather than 60 seconds, saving you 5 seconds total. So if you need an emergency build a factory and have a lot more money than you have production, or have build power, build the caretaker first. Anyway, that was Hokomoko and Kane. We're going to have a lot of games with Kane today, because that was... I guess Kane played a lot of games recently, and that, those were the games that were there. Next one's going to be Kane versus Google Frog on Red Comet. Apparently, Hover again. I think Kane is trying to experiment with Hover, which should be interesting. Because Hover is one of those things that we we see from time to time. It comes in vogue, and then it goes away. And then it comes back in vogue, and then it goes away. It seems to be back in vogue again. Just scalpels. All the scalpels. I should be curious if there was any change to scalpels recently. But anyway... We'll be back with the next game in just a couple of moments, so stay tuned.